As you know, I like to do some Bible talk at the end of the week, but there is somebody who is now joining me on the line who is doing it much more thoroughly than I am these days. That, of course, is Father Mike Schmidt. He is host of The Bible in a Year with Father Mike Schmidt. It is the number one podcast on Apple Podcasts for 17 consecutive days, which was kind of a shock for folks because what in the world was a Bible show doing at the very top of the charts? Father Schmitz, thanks so much for joining the show. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. It is an honor to talk to you. So first of all, why don't you tell me uh, what kind of got you started on doing a podcast on the Bible? Obviously, it's it's something that a lot of people are interested in. Uh, I talk about it a fair bit on the show, but not like you're doing in a, in a continuous and, and thoroughgoing fashion. What, what got you the idea to actually go ahead and do this? You know, that's a good question. Uh, one of the things I noticed is that... Um, I, I love audiobooks. I love podcasts. I love you know just listening to like I'll, I'll be making a meal and just or going for a walk driving and I'm listening to something on YouTube. And so I take in a lot of information, you know, uh, audibly. And uh, I found that I, I fall asleep. I sit down to read and it's like I'm out like a light. Um, but also I noticed something else. So one was the fact that like, yeah, it's much easier to listen to something than it is to sit down and read it. OK, that's one thing. The second thing I noticed is that, man, with a lot of uh a lot of this stuff, like say the news and whatnot, stuff going on in our culture and politics, I found myself being so distracted by voices and so distressed by like kind of the stuff going on that I thought, you know, I need to go back to the Bible. I need to go, I need to go back to God's word and just like allow my lens to be shaped that way. Um, not just by really smart people, not just by um, uh, people who have a lot of good things to say. And there are a lot of people who have a lot of good things to say, but by actually what's the story? Like what's the big story? So I had that kind of combination in my head of just like be able to listen to God's word and then allow that to shape my 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 worldview, allow that to shape my lens. And I thought it'd be really great if we could just how about once a day I have that chance of like 20 minutes and just let my mind, let my heart, let the way I look at the world be shaped, uh, not just by the world, but by God's word. So were you surprised by the outpouring of support? Because certainly, again, most of the top podcasts are news related, many are entertainment related, but now, this is the first one that I'd ever seen that was Bible related at the top of the charts. Absolutely. It was one of those things where if someone had asked me, hey, Father Mike, uh, what is your best idea that you think would get to the you know top of the Apple podcast charts? I would not say it's me reading the Bible, <laughs> um, but I was it, it really reveals, I think, in so many ways that I wasn't alone in that sense of being you know, really just constantly distracted and often distressed by um, but what's out there. And I think it just really touched a nerve in a lot of people. Of course, it's the beginning of the year and people want to, you know, they want to do something they know is good for them. Um, and I think that's one of the things that this podcast makes easy. It makes um, something people know is already good for me, makes it really accessible. It like reduces any kind of obstacle to begin. Just press play and you're in. Well, one of the things that's really nice about the podcast, and again, the podcast is The Bible in a Year with Father Mike Schmidt. Uh, one of the things that's really nice is that it takes the Bible really seriously textually. Uh, which, of course, yes. is great because there are so many people who only remember the Bible from that brief period of time when they were children and they went to Sunday school and they got the really kind of dumbed down, uh, the, the sort of G-rated version of the Bible without any of the complexity, without any of the difficulty. And that, that's something that, that you don't do here. You get in sort of the complexity and difficulty of the Bible. Well, and that's the thing, too, that that I think is necessary for us to understand is that these are not the Bible is not a hallmark story, right? It's not kind of really clean and neat. Um, it is not. It's a, it's messy and it's about life and but it's also about God being in, involved in our lives um, in, a, in a dramatic way. And I think that when just like you said, when we have this cleaned up, you know, children's vision of the Bible and of what life is supposed to be like, then it doesn't then the Bible doesn't measure up. But then when we actually say, no, here's the messiness of the stories, here's the reality of these stories and here's the true uh, reality of the presence of God in these stories, then all of a sudden I can realize so my story is not very different than these stories. And I think that that's the feedback I've gotten over this past month has been people who, you know, good people, they thought they were, you know, they thought they knew the Bible. Like, wow, I didn't know all these stories. Like, I didn't realize the depth to which um, uh, there's brokenness in the human condition and even in the chosen people, you know, the family of God that God enters into, you know, so Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and, and following. But encouraged by that, not distract, not um not discouraged by that, but really, really encouraged by the fact that God chose these people and he worked with them. He can still work in my life. We'll get to more with Father Schmitz in just one moment. First, 
Let me just remind you, tax day is coming up. It is going to suck. Tax day is always bad unless you have somebody helping you out. Now, as we all know, last year, the government printed trillions of bucks. Those dollars did make it into your pocket via stimulus and unemployment payments and PPP loans. They didn't tell you that's all taxable. And that complicates your tax situation. Luckily for you, there is tax file. Tax file is a fully online network of CPAs and IRS enrolled agents. The pros at tax file will do all the work for you and save you the most money. Again, tax day is coming up March 15th for small business, April 15th for individuals. You need to get ready. You need to get prepared. Tax file can help you. You can connect with a licensed professional in seconds. Tax file has 3,300 CPAs and EAs all licensed by either their state boards of accountancy or the IRS. And tax file is more affordable than H&R Block and local tax shops. They got a 100% U.S.-based workforce. Start today. Download the Tax File app or visit taxfile.com slash Ben. Use code Ben20 at checkout to receive 20 bucks off. That's taxfile, T-A-X-F-Y-L-E dot com slash Ben. Your taxes are going to suck this year. Don't make them suck more than they need to. Use the folks over at Tax File. They can help you out. Taxfile.com slash Ben. So much of the opposition to organized religion these days is rooted in basic questions that religion answers, but but it's always provided sort of interesting answers too. So the, the question that you, you always get from folks who are not religious is, okay, why would God allow bad things to happen? And it's though right. this is a, a, lo- a light that has never dawned on anyone ever before. There, there are so many people who, again, went to Sunday school when they were eight, nine, 10 years old. And when somebody, they go to college and somebody says, yeah, well then why do bad things happen to good people? And it's as though they've been hit with a, a brick and, and, and the reality is that, it, yeah. that, you know, that the, the question of theodicy has been a little bit considered by by religious thinkers since like literally the very beginning of the Bible. Uh, the Bible is right, filled with stories of bad things happening to good people. It's filled with stories of good things happening to bad people. It's filled with stories of bad people doing good things and, and good people doing bad things. Like the, the shaded nature of the human condition is not hidden in the Bible. It's something I think you really get into. And that's something I'm so glad you brought that up because twofold. One is uh, in the first month, one of the things we do is we not only follow Genesis, we also follow Job. So like right away, I think on day five, we jump into Job. And again, the feedback from people is like, I've known the story of Job, but I did not know like the depth to which uh, Job dives into that incredible question. And again, doesn't dismiss it. And I think that's one of the things as you're, as you're highlighting is there can be a certain degree of postmodern biblical scholarship that will try to, <laughs> it will do away with those difficult passages. It'll do away with difficult stories. And not only that, but you mentioned the Bible's full of people, good people doing bad things and bad people doing good things. And it goes to the heart of the complexity of us. And especially in our current culture where like, no, if you're a good person, you only do good things. You've only tweeted good things. You've only said good things. And if you're a bad person, everything you are is bad. And I think um, in that way, the Bible once again reminds us of there is a bigger world and there is more complexity to the world uh, and also more goodness in each person than I think we're willing to admit. So Father Mike, it seems like we're living in a time, generally speaking, the stats show this, of waning religion, increasing secularism, uh, a movement generally away from biblical living and biblical values and the insertion of secular values as sort of pseudo replacement. Uh, a, a lot of anger, I think, has, has come out because of that. I think there's a God-shaped hole in the human heart and it's being filled with a lot of really nasty things right now. Do you think, that there's going to be, you know, a a comeback here for religion, and how do how do we go about making that happen? I think there has to be. I think that um, there once it's kind of like um, secular humanism, right? At when the big, when that began, when the rise of this, you also have the uh, uh, the Great Awakening and the Second Great Awakening in response to these kinds of things, because there's a degree to which if you're a thinking person. Um, you realize that secular humanism doesn't really have a leg to stand on, ultimately on itself. It proposes, it proposes these virtues that don't have any basis in um, in a light, in a world that doesn't have God, in which God doesn't exist. And the same kind of thing when it comes to revealed religion. So not just kind of like, I'm spiritual, but not religious. Like, that's wonderful. I mean, I'm glad that you recognize that you are not just a human, not just a matter, but also spirit. That's really good. But at the same time, a lot of people that I know, I work on a college campus, who say that they're spiritual but not religious. Like, well, okay, what do you know about God? Well, I know that God is love. Okay, how do you know that? Like, I know that God is good or God is just or God cares about me. Like, I believe all those things too, but how do you know that? And the reality is we only know that because he's revealed that about himself and in a very specific place in the Hebrew scriptures and Christian scriptures. And without that, you would have no idea that he even knew your name, that he cared about you, that he was just or that he was good. And I think that when people really, really search 
uh, their their minds, not just their hearts, but really do the heavy lifting of thinking about where do my thoughts, where do my beliefs, where do my opinions come from? Um, you have to find a source or else you're going to be, you know, try to, you're, you're sawing off the the limb you're you're sitting on. Well, the, the podcast is The Bible in a Year with Father Mike Schmitz. Really excited to see it at the top of the podcast charts. Thanks so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Ben Shapiro Show. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you stay up to date on all of our future content.